emails recently from people asking how they'll go about creating a bingo activity um, for Triptycope. So I thought I'll do a quick video to show you how to do that. The process is actually the same for creating any activity, but um, we'll do this one for with, with the intention of opening it with bingo. So we'll start by logging in. So you need to add your Triptico username and password. So I'm going to add mine there. And then we're going to create a new list. So we'll go to create. And then we don't want to create a lesson, we just want to create a list. Now the one thing you need to bear in mind if you're creating for bingo is that it must have at least 12 rows. That's just because again, bingo requires 12 um, individual items. The students choose six or any six to write on their bingo card and then we select from 12. So you need to make sure you've got at least 12 rows. You can have more, you could have 20 or 50 or 100 or however many rows you want, but you need to have at least 12. Um, I'll show you, we'll make an example with one column and that'll be a little bit of a, um, maybe a too simplistic uh, game of bingo and I'll show you how we can make it a little bit more advanced later. So we'll stick with one column, we need our 12 rows, so we'll click this add new row button till we get to 12. So there we go, so we've now got 12 rows and for this simple example I've just got some European countries. So I tried to pretty much go from A to well, it's good A to N. There's a couple of letters I couldn't do, but uh, we'll start with oops, capital letters. We'll start with Albania, and then we've got Belgium, oops, Belgium, Croatia, uh, Denmark, Estonia, France, Germany, Hungary, Ireland. Latvia, Malta, and Norway. So there's our 12 countries. Oops, check they're all spelled correctly. And once we've done that, we can save it. So we'll click to save it. I will call it European Countries. I could add some tags here if I wanted to help me to find it in the future or help other people to find them. If they search for geography, if geography for example, they would find this particular. Um, activity. We can decide whether we want to make it private or public. I'll keep it as public which means other people can view it and use it if they want to. Click to save and that's it, it's saved. So I go back to my save files. I've now got this new file. You can see it's got the code 22225. So I wanted to share that, give people that code or I could give them the direct link, whichever was easiest. European countries will click to open it and we'll open it with bingo. I've got the list of all the different activities we can open with here but we'll open it with bingo. So we see we've got the countries that we've just typed. The idea would be that students would create a bingo card, write down any six of these countries. So they could choose Albania, Belgium, Denmark, France, Ireland, and Malta. And then when we play the game, if the country selected is on their bingo card, then they can cross it off. So that's quite a basic sort of, sort of traditional game of bingo, I suppose, where you're just getting the you know the countries being displayed there, and then if you've got it on your card, you cross it off. We can make a slightly more sophisticated game of bingo by adding an extra column. So we'll do that now. So instead of opening our European countries file, we'll click to edit it. So we'll edit it and we'll add a second column. And so in the second column, we'll put the capital city for each of these countries. Uh, so Brussels, Zagreb, Copenhagen, Tallinn, Paris, Berlin, Budapest, Dublin, Riga, Valletta, and Oslo. Okay, so we've still got our 12 rows, but now we've got two columns. We've got the countries and we've got the capital cities. So I'll save it again. We'll keep the file name exactly the same. I could add an extra tag now if I wanted to. Capitals, we could add places, whatever we wanted to add in there. We'll keep it public, we'll save it. And there we go, that file's now saved for us. So when I go back to the save files, I've still got my European countries file, but this time it's gonna have the two columns. So now when we play a game of bingo, we can play a slightly more uh, sophisticated game. So I'll click to open the resource. This time the students will write down six capital cities. So they could write down Paris, Valletta, Budapest, Dublin, Oslo and Brussels. And then when we play the game, rather than just showing the capital cities, it will show the country. 
So it shows the country France. So before the students can cross anything off their bingo card, they need to know what the capital city of France is. So that's quite an easy one. If they've got Paris on their card, they can cross it off. And the next one, Denmark. So again, if they've got the capital city, Copenhagen, on their card, then they can cross it off. So that's a better game of bingo. It's a little bit more challenging. You need to sort of know the, the answer before you can cross it off your bingo card. So there you go. That's how you would go about creating a very simple um, bingo game. One other thing which I'll show you, which is quite handy to know, we click to open it, and then rather than choosing bingo straight away, we'll click to preview the data. So there's our um, capital, uh, countries and capital cities, but this time we'll switch the columns. So we switch them. So now the capital cities are in column one and the countries are in column two. We'll still open it with bingo. I'll show you how this changes the game ever so slightly. So now rather than writing the capital cities on their bingo card, the students actually write the countries. So it's the same game, it's just got a slight twist. Um, they write down the countries and it was shown in the capital cities. So perhaps at the start of a lesson you could play a game where the students write down capital cities and then at the end of the lesson where they write down the countries. Or if you teach in France, French, it could be they write down the word in French at the start of the lesson and write down the word in English at the end, whatever you wanted to do. So it just adds a little bit of variety. So now they're shown a capital city and they need to know which country that um, city is the capital of before they can cross it off their card. So they need to know that Croatia um, as the capital cities are great. So there you go. So that's another something that's just quite handy to know, just if you want to add a little bit of a variety to a list. Um, you can also uh, open the same activity with different resources. So we've opened it with Bingo. We could open it with a spinner, for example. So this is the exact same list, which took us you know, a minute or so to create. We've opened it with Bingo. We can open it with a spinner. So it selected Belgium at random, and then we would click hopefully see Brussels. There we go, so we get the answer. Malta. The exact same activity we could open with, which one should we look at next? We could open it with cardboard. So this just converts our list into a pack of cards. We'll give it a little shuffle. We'll deal out all 12. And so we get our countries, and then we can flip the cards over to reveal the capital cities. We can also zoom in, flip them over and zoom back out again. So again, it's the same list, much more efficient hopefully than the old version where you'd have to recreate this list in lots of different resources. We'll try one more, let's try a new one. This is the match resource. So we can open it with this resource. And the idea here is that students would have to sort of find the matching um, capital cities. Let's see Belgium, there we go. So Belgium, Brussels, they could click to see if it's a match. There we go. Um, and they could also open, we could also open that exact same list with one of the quizzes, something like, where's the answer possibly? So let's say we just have two teams, we'll not put team names in for now, just put team one and team two, stick with numbers. So the idea here is the students have to memorize where each country is, and then they'll be shown a capital city and they've got to try and remember where the the country was that matched, or sorry, the capital city was that matched that particular country. So there we go. So team one is given Estonia. So we'd have to try and find Tallinn. No idea where it was, but Brussels, that's not right. Okay, so there we go. So hopefully that's helpful. Um, that's how I would create a simple list for bingo. The only thing you need to bear in mind is that it must have at least 12 rows. It's better if it's got two columns because then you get that sort of more advanced uh, game of bingo where students need a little bit of knowledge before they can just cross an item off the card. It's up to you if you want to add that or not. Um, and then again, just because you've created it for bingo, that's not to say you can't open it with a spinner or cardboard or word magnets or hidden card or whatever. And even as I add new resources, this list will open automatically with any new resources that I create as well. So uh, hopefully that's helpful. Hopefully that gives you a few ideas for um, activities that you could create. If you've got any questions at all, please get in touch. I've added this little chat um, button to the website so you can send me a message. And if I'm online, we can have a little chat while you're on the website. Don't even need to leave the website, which is quite handy if you're creating something. You can have this little chat box open as you create into sort of ask questions and uh, get a bit of real-time help if you want to, or you can email and um, so on. Okay, so I hope that's helpful. Um, thanks for everyone who support Trip to Core. I really appreciate it. Um, and, yeah, again, any questions or feedback, please just get in touch. Thanks very much.